Today's video is brought to you by Dev Mountain, a bootcamp that teaches you iOS development, web development, and quality assurance and design. They do a lot of stuff. I had the chance to go there for a week and it was just an absolute blast. They keep things quick, structured, and career focused. I even learned quite a bit of things while I was there because when you're learning on your own, you don't notice the structure of things as bigger companies do. And they really focus on that. If you want to learn more about them, link will be in the description down below. Anyway, let's jump right into it. Hey, what's up guys, Jared here. And today I'm going to be taking a look at how to resize a UI table view cell to fit the size of an image. Now the method we're going to be using today is actually very helpful, especially if you're using servers. So what we're going to do today is grab the ratio of the image and either upload that to Firebase and work with that. But you know, right now we're just going to be working with that locally. Uh, but same concept applies. You grab a variable and work with that. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so first things first, we're gonna create a new Xcode project, single view application, and we're gonna name it image sizing. Now go ahead and create. Then once you're done with that, you're gonna head over to your main.storyboard and delete the view controller that's in there and replace it with a table view controller. Then heading back over into your view controller.swift, we're gonna go ahead and change the class name to a table view controller and give it the super class of a UI table view controller. And there you have it. Now we're going to head back into the main.storyboard and change the class of it to a table view controller. That way everything that we change will affect that view controller. All right, so now we have the basic setup. So now we're going to go ahead and create a cell that we're going to be able to put into our table view controller. So we're going to go ahead and say file, new file, and we're going to create a Swift file. And I'll call this my image table view cell. And now we're going to spend some time setting this up. So we're going to say import UI kit. We're going to give this the class of image view cell with the super class of a UI table view cell and then create your initializer which is going to be style with reuse identifier and then super dot in it with style and reuse identifier and fill out the variables accordingly and that's the basics of getting a, a table view set up now let's add some elements into our table view cell so we're going to go ahead and create a main image view so go ahead and say var main image view colon ui image view will be equal to open close curly bracket open close parentheses and then inside of that we're going to say var image view will be equal to a ui image view and we want to say image view dot translates auto resizing mask into constraints and we'll set that equal to false. That way, whatever anchors we set later on will affect that image view. If you don't set this, they don't work properly. And then finally, we want to go ahead and return that image view to the main image view. And then now inside of our initializer, we're going to go ahead and say self dot add sub view of our main image view. And then now we're going to set up the constraints. We're just going to add left, top, bottom, and right constraints, just all connecting to the sides of the frame of our table view cell. That easy stuff. And then of course, make sure that all of those is active is set equal to true. That way, it works. <laughs> and then finally, for whatever reason, you need to go ahead and add a required init coder. And then that's going to go ahead and get rid of that annoying error there. So boom, now we have our cell set up. Now let's go ahead and take the cell and put it into our table view controller. So we're going to head back over to our view controller.swift and we're going to add the functions that are necessary to get a table view up and running. So we're going to have number of rows in section and also cell for row index path. Now to get the height working, we need to have height for row index path as well. And we'll play around with that a little bit later. But before we start populating our table view, we need to go ahead and grab some images. So I'm going to say var images will be equal to open close brackets. And then inside of that, we're going to grab some images from my desktop. Do a little renaming, one, two, three, four, five. Realize that it doesn't work. So you're going to do image one, two, three, four, five. There you have it. And then now heading back into our viewcontroller.swift, we're going to add those images right into those open close brackets. So just start typing in the name of your images with image literal and you get it all working. So just list out all five images right there, separated with commas. So now that we have our images, we now know how many rows inside of the section we need. So we're gonna go ahead and return our images.count. And now let's get that cell that we created into our table view. So before we do that, we need to register that cell with our table view. So we're gonna say self.tableview.register image view cell dot self with the reuse identifier of image view cell. And then now instead of the cell for row index path, you're just gonna say var cell will be equal to table view dot dq reusable cell with identifier in the which you're gonna go ahead and grab that cell that you just registered via your identifier image view cell. And then finally, it doesn't really know that that cell that it's grabbing is going to be of that certain type of cell that we created. So there's no way that we'd be able to access the image view. So what we need to do is say as image view cell and we were good to go. Now let's go ahead and return that cell. And then finally, we need to add that image into the cell as well. So I'm going to say cell.mainImageView.image will be equal to 
images for the index path dot row. And then just to see if everything's working, erase your height for row index path function. We'll put it right back. Um, and then just build and run this and let's see what we have. And also change var cell to let cell because we don't change that variable later on. So let cell. And then if you build and run it right now, you'll realize that you have a black screen and that's because I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, but we need to head back over to our main dot storyboard and click on the table view controller and say is initial view controller. Now we're good to go, build and run that. And then, yeah, th those images are, are way too big. So let's fix that. So now we can start working with the height. So go ahead, add the height for row index path function back. And now we want to create an extension for our UI view that will grab the crop ratio. So we're going to say extension UI image, func get crop ratio, and we expect a return of a CG float open close curly bracket. And then inside of this, we're just gonna say var width ratio will be equal to self.size.width divided by self.size.height. So that's just taking the image and width divided by height. We now know the image ratio. So you can think of it like this. For a normal image, it's 1920 by 1080. So if you were to take that and say 1920 divided by 1080, let me calculate this real quick. Uh, that is equal to 1.77777 and so on. <laughs> but that number there is very helpful for figuring out uh, exactly what we need for the height or the width because we know now that the width of our image is 1.77 times bigger than the height of our image. And so we can work with that. And really you can grab the, the width ratio and the height ratio and work with either one of those, but really you don't need to do that. You would either multiply or divide. So in our case, we know the width because we're setting up a table view controller. So we're just gonna access the width of our table view controller and divide that by this ratio here and we should get exactly what our height is going to be. So enough talking about it, let's go ahead and put this into action. But before we do that, we need to just return that width ratio so that it finishes up that function. And then going into our height for row index path, we need to grab the current image that we're looking at for that cell. So we're going to say let current image equal images for the index path dot row. So now you're just going to say let the image crop equal current image dot crop rate dot get crop ratio. And then now that's going to give you all the information you need. And then you go ahead and say return the table view dot frame dot width multiplied by, this is incorrect, I'm a big dummy and I did this first, but uh, we'll fix this later. No, 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 no. I'll say uh, I did this for testing purposes. Yeah, yeah, to, to show you what it was like. Anyway, <laughs> but if you were to say table view dot frame dot width multiplied by your image crop, this is the result that it would give you. Um, obviously it's incorrect. Uh, so let's go ahead and say divided by image crop. And now we get it perfectly sized for each of the images as we scroll through. Pretty cool, huh? So we have images that are taller, we have images that are shorter, and it seems to work perfectly for each and every one of those. And this is where it becomes really important to say that if you were using a server, you would just take that image crop, upload that to the server, and then pull that down before you load up your images or your data or whatnot. And that's how you would determine the correct height or the width of whatever you're trying to show. Now, of course, I'm showing this with a uh, table view, but this concept could be applied anywhere. A collection view, uh, just a normal image view, anywhere. All you would need to do is get that ratio and either multiply or divide by a known value. So if you have the width already, you would of course divide. But if you have the height, you would multiply and you would try and work around that with either a collection view or another table view or something like that. And this doesn't really even apply to collection views or table views. You can just use this for normal UI image views. If you wanna know how big a UI image view should be, you just multiply or divide by a known value uh, to this image ratio, and that's gonna allow you to figure out the width or the height of your image. And there you have it, kind of a quick one. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything that I can do to improve this. I will say I'm working on this in my own application where it has a bunch of elements and resizing because of uh, text views and whatnot, but I go about it with a little bit different method, but it, right now it's causing a lot of constraint breaks, and I didn't wanna teach that method until I solved what's causing those constraint breaks. So I'm gonna do a follow-up video to this as soon as I figure out what's what's going on so we can more have more adaptive table view cells uh, to these image views. Anyway, have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.